I think it's a really challenging job. I'm losing power. I'm losing power. It's going. I keep going. Keep going for now. Keep I going. can't. It's broken. There's a lot of adrenaline. There's a lot of like on the spot decision making. <laughs> I can't believe we were last. And then the last 20 laps on slicks. P4. Awesome. To be sat up here and to sort of make the decision and then see them play out. It's just an amazing feeling. P6. Well done, mate. Points on the board. <laughs> Yes, boys! Good strategy, you guys! My name is Ruth Buscombe, and I am the Senior Strategy Engineer at Alfa Romeo Racing. Strategy is basically trying to facilitate the best possible decision-making uh, throughout a race weekend. From the basics of the things that people will know the most, which is calling pit stops, when are we pitting in the race, how many times, what tyres are we fitting, but it stretches a long way beyond that. Here up on the pit wall, we're actually set up to make all of the decisions here if we need to. However, we don't try and work like that. So we have a team of 30 to 40 people back at base in Mission Control in Woking. We work with them live through every single session, not, not just through the race itself. I mean, the strategy team in particular, we have quite a large team back at base. So we have a strategist per car and we have a whole team of strategy volunteers back at base as well who are listening to competitor radio, trying to spot things on TV that may be useful to our decision making as well. Looks like some of the other cars that was maybe slightly quicker than us early in the run are now carrying more deg and falling back. Okay. One of the advantages we do have is that sometimes we're a step removed from what's going on at the track, so we can uh, have a wider angle of what's going on with everyone. And we feed that information onto the track and our strategies at the track feeds more direct, specific information for each car to us. It's about putting all of that together and making the best possible decisions. So for race weekend, the, the strategy and the work that we do starts a lot, lot earlier than you would imagine. We actually even do a lot of work over the winter, looking at the races for the following year and looking at what the key ones might be. Um, and that's when we start. We need to select the tyres that we bring that we run on a Friday and a Saturday. And that happens eight to 14 weeks in advance of the race, looking at what compounds you're going to run on Friday, what you're going to run on Saturday and potentially what your strategy might start to look like. We have to do a bunch of simulations working closely both with race engineering and the tyre simulation department in order to try and guess which tyres we think we're going to need um, all the way over at the end of the season. Now that will be dependent on what we think the track will do, also what kind of temperatures we're likely to get, uh, whether we think there's a good chance of rain or not, and also how competitive we think we're expecting to be as to whether or not we need to cover to try to go all the way to Q3, um, or for other teams, uh, particularly Williams, they might make a different selection if they're expecting to try to be getting out of Q1. So we have a plan from three months or two months ago but things can change over that period. We may realise in the intermediate races that we're quicker or slower. We may realise that we have power unit penalties at certain races, that it's going to rain on Sunday, and that all influences our choices. So when we make those plans, they're very flexible, and those strategies, we kind of adapt them through the weekend. Sometimes you've committed with your tyre selection and you've said, actually, we're going to go for maximum qualifying bias. So a track like Budapest, where it's the fourth hardest overtake of the season, where overtaking is very difficult and qualifying is very important, for this event, we've gone very aggressive, so we have all of the soft tyres already. There's other events where you might take an extra medium, depending on the latest information that you've got between ordering the tyres, getting to the race and what your competitors have picked, which we find out two weeks before the event. You'll need to make a decision as to whether you keep that tyre or you run it on day one, or whether you want to keep bring it through to day two. Friday practice is really important for strategy because as we go, as we build up to the race, we run simulations that give us basically a forecast or an expectation of how we think the weekend is going to evolve. And Friday's our chance to check those models and those expectations. Can you work out for me if we run the same downforce package as winter testing with the same power output, but in the conditions of today, uh, and the same wind, just the conditions of today, what the difference in end of straight speed should be. Simulations are really quite heavily important to us. We have 4,000 machines in the cloud that we use to run simulations live. We've built quite a complex model in the background that we use to simulate what we think the race event might be. So that includes things like our pace, the te other team's pace, our tyre model, as we've discussed a few times, the overtaken model. So we run a sort of offline simulation with all of the cars starting in what we think are the relative positions. Um, and allow them flexibility and stop lap and strategy um, and we run hundreds of thousands of simulations. 
just to put it in context, there's for a single race, there's more different permutations or different ways a race can unfold than there are electrons in the universe. So you're never ever going to model everything. So what we try and do is be really smart about using elements of game theory and machine learning to help us model what our competitors may do and to try and always stay a step ahead of them. We're looking at, you know, is the degradation higher or lower than expected? Is the tire going to last 10 laps more or 10 laps less? We also do a lot of work at our pace and the pace of others. I get some feedback at the tyres of this pace because the worst thing would be the pace drops and we don't know about it. And we factor that into what tyres we potentially have for qualifying and what we have for the race and set our plan for Saturdays. On Saturday, the decisions we're making are how many runs do we think we need in qualifying, in qualifying itself. When's the best time to release the car in terms of traffic patterns? Are we looking to try and get a tow from a car in front or actually is it a track where it's actually very bad to sit in front of a car from the front because the, the dirty air actually means you lose lap time? And then when you've set a lap time, is that lap time good enough to get through to the next part of qualifying or do we need to do another lap? Confirm safe for laps, confirm safe for laps. Confirm for Chaco as well, see if... And there's also to do with fueling and qualifying, so for example, how much extra fuel do you want to take? It's often you can't ha afford that, you can't take the extra tenth of uh, lap time for taking all this extra fuel with you. So these are the kind of decisions we're making on Saturday. Then Saturday night, if you don't have both cars into Q3, you also have to decide the starting tyre. So you're doing a lot of simulation work, not only to base the race strategy, but also to decide what tyre you're going to start the race on. And so all of Saturday evening basically is coming up with the scenarios, running very um, detailed simulations of how the race is going to unfold. Uh, and then we start planning different um, fallback strategies, like what happens if we gain a place at the start? What happens if we lose a place at the start? What happens if this car is slower than we think? What happens if this car is faster than we think? And even then during the race and the lead up to the race, it doesn't really let off. So even when the tyre blankets come off the cars when they're on the grid, we find out what tyres everyone is on. We then can like chop out certain scenarios that are not relevant and really hone in on more details. But it's also really adaptive. So in the race, you're constantly thinking, let's say I'm on a one stop and I'm doing an extending first stint. You're thinking, OK, so what would cause me not to do the extension? What might cause me to pit now? What would I do if it began to drizzle, if it looks like it's changeable conditions, if there's a safety car? So we're reacting to all of those information together, um, but trying to stick as close to the plan as we can. In Formula One, it's only the race engineer that talks directly to the, to the driver, except for very rare circumstances. Above that, we then have the head of track engineering, we have head of strategy, we also have our sporting director. Sometimes you only have a very small amount of time to make a decision, in which case you end up having to cut down and you just go straight from strategy to head of track engineering, brings the car in and the driver comes straight in. An example of that is what you hear on the radio when people say things like virtual safety car window or safety car window open. Check or safety car windows are open. That means that if a virtual safety car comes out and the driver is in uh, turn 14 and they need to get into the pits by turn 15, so they actually only have five seconds, they will automatically pit because it's already been pre-decided. One of the decisions that people don't realise that strategy of control of is what are we willing to give up to gain more? So for example, if you're in 11th or 12th, you might be willing to take quite a big risk to get into the points, but what happens if you're fifth or sixth? Do we want to basically lock in where we are? Do we want to go for a secure number of points or do we want to risk a bit more to take a bigger point sort? And that's something that's constantly evolving through the weekend and through the race and then through the championship, basically, as the year's evolving and that risk balance changes. After a race, um, what we typically do is um, immediately after the race we'll go in to have the debrief. We print out something that's called a race trace, which is basically a, a visual representation of all of the gaps during the race. And that will be there in the debrief uh, for the drivers and for the engineers, basically to remind themselves of what has happened. Maybe they'll say, actually this compound felt worse than expected. I think this stint, there was more time left in the tyres. And it's also often a good place to provide explanations for things that there wasn't really much time to explain why you've done something. 
We then have a post-race report that's done in the first uh, couple of days after the race, but it really depends on what decisions you need to make based on the post-analysis. As a strategy team, we're really connected to the end result on track. You're constantly having to adapt because they're a good strategist all the way up and down the pit lane, and you're trying to constantly stay a step ahead of them. And I enjoy that, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline, there's a lot of, like, on-the-spot decision-making. Never just uh, one person, it's, it's always a team effort. Yes, guys, yes! Oh, amazing job. Great job, guys. I did the job at the start, you did it on the strategy. What a team, what a team.